Hey guys, it's been a while, but I'm back in Polybridge. I've wanted to make a tank for a few months now, and I finally have the opportunity to do it. So, let's get right into it. First thing I did was push the islands back together, and I wanted to start working on the tank tread. Now, the reason I wanted to start specifically with the tank tread is that everything else I do is going to be based basically just off of this. So you see there I had a bunch of roads in place, and that was sort of the start of what I wanted, but the roads ended up being too big. So I have these small road segments instead, and the idea is I'm going to have a big chain of these that I'm able to just drive around, and that's going to be basically just my tread. Now I have to use road here because it's the only material, well I guess besides reinforced road, that'll actually span across the entire width of the track and won't look weird when I'm trying to drive it. So you can see here as I just load in, it falls straight down and that's actually okay. That means the whole thing is loose and I'm gonna be able to support it with some sort of wheel in the center. This is the next thing I wanted to start on, and for that I'm just going to start out with some bridge pieces since usually it's the easiest way to go about things. So I'm using some pieces of wood here, and I'm just putting them together in this sort of spoke formation, and if you give it a quick run, road falls down and doesn't interact with it. So I sort of expected this because the wood and the road don't interact with each other unless they're connected with a node. So I just got the spacing right with all of these wheels, and that was about what I wanted. And the next thing I wanted to do is get it to start interacting with the roads. So I put two roads on those wheels themselves, but the roads pass straight through each other. And this is sort of why I held off working on the tank for a while, because I knew it would require custom shapes. So by putting one in like this, you can see it does interact with the roads, and I'm pretty sure this is the only way that you can actually make a tank tread that like can move around in the way that tank treads normally do, because you can't just use the standard bridge pieces. But the custom shape worked pretty much perfectly, so I just deleted all of those wood pieces I had in place, and also expanded out the tank tread a little bit, because it's a little bit too small to hold the custom shape in place. So after just expanding it out to the size I wanted, I put the custom shape in place, and also put a dynamic anchor in the center. Now this is going to allow me to move around the shape while still being able to hold onto it, and what I'm going to use that for is tying all the wheels together. So I put all those other wheels in place here, and now I'm tying them together with a bunch of pieces of steel. And once I did that, the tank tread immediately broke. So, this is also something kind of to be expected, because I need to put it in unbreakable mode. And for most big vehicles in this game, you kind of have to use unbreakable mode, because the materials are incredibly weak. I think someone figured out the steel was even weaker than styrofoam, so it's just sort of the way things have to go. Now there's a lot of slack in this track, so what I decided to do is replace the steel pieces at the ends with springs. And you can see here I have that, and the tank tread is much more taut. So now that I had that, I needed some way to be able to power the tank tread. And there's a few ways to go about this, but the one I did for my armored vehicle that I wanted to try here was using some monster trucks and pushing them against the tank tread so as their wheels rotate, it rotates the tank tread as well and allows it to move. So I built up the basic, basic frame for the tank here so I know where I'd be able to hide these trucks. And after I did that, I just put a truck in place. And the normal procedure to get this to work is just to use a bunch of road pieces surrounding the truck and use springs to pull those road pieces against the truck, which forces it against the tank treads in this case, which allows the wheels to rotate the tank tread and the tank to move. Now here when I went to test it, I realized there's a lot of problems that I actually have never had to deal with before, because the tank tread is still not perfectly taut. It's allowed to move around a lot, and that makes it very difficult for the truck to be able to get compressed against the tank tread, and it's really hard for it to get really good power transfer. So in this case, when it's going perfectly flat, it's fine, but if you even give it just a tiny little bump like this, these two trucks are really struggling to move the tank treads, and eventually here they just get totally stuck and can't even do it at all. So I delete the tanks, and I decided to work on a hydraulic engine instead. Now to get started on the hydraulic engine, I just put in a single hydraulic like this, told it to fully expand, and then put in a single piece of steel at the bottom of it, attached to another fixed joint. So the idea is as the hydraulic expands, it'll be able to rotate this steel piece around. And here after I put a little wood piece on it, just to bias it a little bit, you can see I sort of get that movement. Now the problem with this is that at the top and bottom of this hydraulics rotation, it has a weak point, and will allow the engine to rotate backwards again, which is not what I want. So I was hoping to use some sort of imbalance to get this engine to work, and my first thought was using a bunch of small hydraulics as opposed to using a large hydraulic, since small hydraulics contract faster than large hydraulics do. So here you can see that I have a large chain of hydraulics, and after those small hydraulics are fully expanded, the large hydraulics not even halfway done. And same for contracting. So I was hoping to use this imbalance in contraction and expansion speed to be able to somehow drive an engine. So my first order of business though was getting these chains of small hydraulics stable so that they weren't just a chain of small hydraulics, they were a rigid body. And after using some horizontal hydraulics to get that done, you can see now I have a totally rigid set of hydraulics that are able to contract and expand faster than just a single hydraulic. 
So my next thing I thought to do is use another hydraulic to pull in a second piston a little bit closer to a first one. And this is incredibly hard to explain. I'm not even entirely sure how it works, but it just did. And what it's gonna do is offset the rotation of one of the hydraulics just enough that it biases it to rotate in the correct direction. So even under load, I can have two hydraulics move exactly how I want. Now, this setup is impossible to do unless you're on unbreakable mode, because otherwise having that small hydraulic pull in is gonna pull on the hydraulic badly and mess things up totally. So the setup I had didn't quite work under load, but I thought it was pretty close to working, so I decided to continue working on it. Here you can see as that small hydraulic expands, how it pulls the hydraulic in, allows the engine to continue rotating. So to improve this, I wanted those large hydraulics on the outside to be the fast contracting and expanding ones. So I just had to copy those in place, and now you can see the engine is technically rotating now in a linear fashion. But under load, it doesn't quite do that, and it ends up just oscillating between two different positions. But since I was getting much closer, I decided to put in a large hydraulic like this, which is going to expand and contract much slower. It's going to pull on those rotational points, which is going to allow the engine to continue rotating in a circle, even under load. And here you can see how that contraction works. It pulls in those two points and allows the engine to continue rotating. Now in this case, it didn't have it quite set right, and it sort of exploded on itself. But after just adjusting its position a little bit, I eventually got this sort of rotation, which is exactly what I wanted. And I tried a fairly heavy load here with just a bunch of roads, and at first it seemed pretty promising. It was able to rotate around, but it was here that it ended up rotating backwards again. And I realized what I had was my hydraulic solution that I made before worked for when the pistons were fully expanded, but when the hydraulics were fully contracted, it didn't do anything for that. So I needed to create a little bit of an offset so that the engine would have a desire to start rotating clockwise when it initially starts, and then the hydraulic will help it to bias it to rotate clockwise when it's fully expanded. So I felt pretty good at this point and thought about putting it on the tank. Now, I didn't realize how massive this engine was in comparison to the tank, and it was literally like <laughs> its entire size at this point. So it just basically got all the connections together to hold the engine, and then just temporarily set it off to the side, and then expanded the size of the tank a ton. So I just added a bunch more wheels and also expanded out the level area so that I'd be able to move this thing around. And after putting in a bunch more custom shapes, I just put in a bunch more tank tread as well, and I finally you see all those custom shapes in place. And then I connected them together with a bunch of compressed springs to push out the tank tread to keep it taut. And the next thing to do is connect the engine back up to the tank. Now this is a little bit harder than I thought, because all those connection points that I attached the engine to the wheels with have some issues in that they're all just directly connected together, and they aren't able to just freely move up or down or whatever, so they wouldn't work so well as a tank, since there's literally no suspension there. But to get it to start driving the tank wheel, what I did is added four more dynamic anchors to that last wheel, and then used a four bar linkage to connect the rotation of the engine to the wheel. And now as the engine rotates, you can see the wheel rotates. So nothing was really happening, and I think it's because I didn't give the wheel any bite on the tread. So I added some teeth onto the wheel to be able to have it grab onto the tread and pull it forwards. And after I did that, it seemed to help, but it was having a lot of trouble. I think it's because I just have way too much tread and wheels, and it just doesn't have enough power to really rotate it around around. There's just too much friction. So I lowered that, and it was moving around much easier, except for the fact that it ran back into the wheels that I had before. And after moving those, you can see it pretty much is able to just easily move the wheel and move the tank tread. So I'm not entirely sure why I did this, but I decided that I wanted to move the powered wheel from the back to the front of the tread. I think it's because I thought it would have an easier time pulling the tread forwards instead of pushing it forwards, but I'm not actually sure if that was the case, but in any case, I'm moving the power from the back wheel to the front wheel. Now I also realized that the engine looked really ugly at this point. It stood up way taller than it needed to, and the steel wasn't even like symmetrical or anything. So I just gave it a big makeover and shrunk it down quite a bit. So now it's just getting supported in a much more efficient way. So I needed some way to be able to transfer the rotation from the engine to that front wheel. And for that, I'm gonna use a bunch more four bar linkages like I did before, but this time I'm just gonna chain a bunch of them together. And I'll put in the second one here. And after just making sure to support them, you can see as the engine rotates, that rotation gets carried further forwards. So finally, all I have to do is connect the rotation from that last four bar linkage up to the front wheel. And once I got that, you can see as the engine rotates, it rotates the front wheel. So that was pretty much good for the drive mechanism. And what I wanted to focus on next was the gun. Now here you can see, I just ended up putting on some springs and a Model T and it shot it out, but I didn't really like that. And really the main reason is just that all I did was pre-tension a bunch of springs and then I just told them to let go at some point and then just shoot the Model T out, which it wasn't that interesting, and I thought what would be more interesting is to actually have the engine pull back the springs and then launch something out with its own power. And the first thing I did was make a rack like this, 
and I'll put in a pinion too. And I moved that pinion down under the tank, and then connected it up to one of the four bar linkages, and just had to support it. And now you can see as the engine rotates, the pinion is rotating as well. So what I did as well is put it on the rack, and the idea is that as the pinion rotates, it'll be able to pull it back and charge up some sort of spring mechanism. And you can see for the most part, it's able to pull it back fine here. So what I did is delete the barrel that I had before since I wasn't really gonna use it. And I put in a second pinion like this, because I was originally thinking of having a second gear in place to reverse its direction so I could pull the rack backwards and be able to shoot something out the front of the tank. Since if I didn't have this, I'd have to put the gun on the left side of the tank, which is fine, but it's just a little weird that it'd be shooting in the opposite direction that it's moving. So to hold the rack in place, I'm just using a bunch of roads like this, and then I just had to support those roads somehow, so I just made a simple truss system. But I decided to support it from the bottom instead, since it looked a bit cleaner. And then I put some roads in the bottom of the rack as well to be able to support it. But I realized immediately having the second pinion in place is kind of a problem, because as the bottom pinion rotates, the top one ends up getting stuck a lot, because the gears just don't mesh very well. Now, having a four-tooth gear isn't exactly the best idea, but the issue is if I put more teeth in the gear, it's going to try to pull back the rack faster, which the engine isn't really powerful enough to do. So I'm sort of just stuck in an awkward spot. But I decided to just continue with it, because it was good enough for just some simple testing. And to do that, I'm just putting in some springs like this. So as the rack moves back, it has to pull on these springs, but immediately as soon as it starts putting tension on the springs, the engine ends up getting stuck and rotates in the wrong direction. So to hopefully decrease the amount of friction between these two pinions, I changed up geometry the top pinion, and it seemed to help a bit and ended up getting a little bit further, but the engine still ended up going in the wrong direction and letting the rack release some tension. So I deleted the top pinion and decided I was probably just going to need to use one. It's not that big a deal, it just means that the barrel of the gun is going to be on the left side of the tank and it's going to be moving from left to right, so it's a little bit reversed. It's going to be like a strategic retreat tank, we'll, we'll call it that. So now as the pinion rotates, it's it easily able to move that rack backwards. And I'm putting in the barrel here. So I just go for a pretty simple shape, and I start out, I want to shoot out a Vespa. Now a Vespa is just a small bike like this, and it should be pretty light and pretty easy to move. I move the Vespa in place, and I just put in some springs to tension up. And I can see as the rack moves back, those springs gained a bunch of tension. And at some point, I'll be able to just release that all at once, and hopefully shoot the Vespa out. So I just change up the launch mechanism to make it easier to release. And I put in a split joint, which will release once the rack gets pulled back to its maximum extent. So now you can see I have that in place. And the Vespa falls out because I have nothing holding it in place yet, that's fine. But you can see that the springs end up getting let go of and pull it forwards. So that wasn't too bad. So to hold the Vespa in place, I put in a little bit of a road here, and then just a steel piece to be able to pin it in place. And you can see the Vespa's totally stuck, but it's still able to get thrown forwards. So I just have the rack tensioned back, and once it lets go, it's close to hitting the Vespa, but it ends up whiffing it. So I change up some of the spring geometry just a little bit, and once I do this, you can see it ends up hitting the Vespa straight on, but it barely moves it. It doesn't even get it out of the barrel. Now, I thought at this point what was probably happening was just that it was too heavy, and instead of shooting out a whole bike, what I could probably do is shoot out a small road piece, which would go a lot faster and further and would just look better in general. So I add in a custom shape, and this is what I'm going to use to hold in that single road piece. So I get it to like C shape, and put in a bunch of anchors, and just rotate it up in place. And once I get that, you can see I'm putting in that road there, that's what's going to be shot out. And now as I go to test it, it's close to working, but the road ends up just falling straight out of it. So I change up the carriage size just a little bit, just make it a bit beefier to hopefully not have the road fall out, but it ends up just tilting down, and no matter what, the road's gonna slide out. So I added another anchor like this, and then connect it up to the rack, and once I do that, it ends up being perfectly stable, and the road gets held in just fine. So then we have the rack go all the way back, and now once it releases, it's not too bad, it ends up getting pulled forwards, but it goes straight into the ground, and the road ends up having to bounce on the ground. So what I did is shrink down the size of that carriage just a little bit, to hopefully encourage the road to go up instead of down. I put in a couple cables to keep that carriage from going too far forwards, so that at some point it gets caught, and then the road ends up flying forwards instead of it. And I also changed up the springs a little bit, so there's two springs at the end instead of just one, which keeps it more straight. And now to go for another test, you can see the road ends up getting shot out much better than before, but it still kind of goes into the ground. So I lower that bottom anchor just a little bit, and once I did that, the road ended up getting shot straight up, and pretty much just worked. So if you notice, the tank wasn't moving during any of those tests, and it's because I just straight up deleted the connections going from the engine to the front wheel, so it just had no way of moving. Now I was going to need some way to be able to destroy that connection, so that 
the tank can end up diverting the power from the wheel to the rack to be able to pull it back and be able to shoot something out. So here you can see you set up just a simple four bar linkage. And if you put a small road on it, you can see it ends up swinging back and forth and the rotation from the top wheel gets carried to the bottom wheel. So this is like the tank was normally before, but to destroy that connection, my idea was to use a mechanical lock and I could do that here with just a couple pieces of steel and a hydraulic. So once the hydraulic expands, it ends up breaking this diamond hydraulic and the connection from the top wheel isn't carried to the bottom wheel. So if we hook that up to all four bars like this, now before the hydraulics end up getting broken, you can see the rotation gets carried just like before. But once the hydraulics expand, the rotation from the top wheel no longer is getting carried to the bottom wheel. They're only loosely coupled. And that means I should be able to divert all of the power from that front wheel to the rack. And now you can see once I got that hooked up to the tank, it moves forward just fine until those hydraulics expand, at which point the tank just stops moving and the rotation from the engine is no longer getting carried to the front wheel. So similarly, I need some way to be able to stop the power from going into the rack until I want it to. So once it stops moving, it can start shooting. So to be able to divert that power properly, what I can do is use just a single hydraulic like this. It's gonna initially push on the pinion to just push it out of the way so that it's not interacting with the rack at all. But once it's time to charge up the rack, it's gonna pull it into position so that it can start rotating against the rack. And you can see that here, once it starts expanding, it gets pushed up into place, it's pretty violent there, but once it's in place, you can see that once the engine rotates, it starts pulling back the rack. And you could also notice that the wheel isn't rotating at all, so I have a way of diverting all of my power from the wheel into the shooting mechanism. Now I wanted to start off the showcase a little differently, instead of having a full level this thing goes through, I wanted to try a few small tests. So here I have a limo, and I just want to see if this thing can get over a limo. So it initially has some issues, and you can see it ends up moving backwards there. And that happens sometimes because the engine doesn't rotate fully and ends up going backwards instead of forwards. Now it's not a problem because it actually does kind of help sometimes. It ends up moving a tank out of the way, pushes it back in a position, and sometimes that new position is a little bit easier for the tank to get over, which helps it out a lot. So you can see here, ended up getting over the limo just fine. And the next thing I wanted to try out was a tow truck. Now this was gonna be kind of hard because the top of the tow truck is above the center point of the wheels. I was a little worried it wasn't gonna be able to even get over this at all, but the front wheel did end up getting over it. And eventually it ended up just falling into this loop where it seemed like the top of the truck got caught in between two of the wheels and it just would not get over it. So the tow truck wasn't quite possible, but I was kind of asking a lot of this because it's kind of a massive thing to get over. So the next thing I thought was just a pile of Vespas, which is sort of similar to the tow truck, but I was hoping they'd be able to move around a lot more freely and the tank would be able to get over it. They ended up being very stable though, which surprised me, and it ended up having a similar problem where I got caught in between a bunch of wheels. So I just deleted those, and I wanted to see if I could get over a bus. Now, just having the bus directly, I knew it had no chance of getting over. But having a bunch of cars with a height leading up to the bus's height, I was hoping it'd be able to get over that. So there's some initial success you can see, it got over the first three cars, but it ended up moving backwards and forwards in the bus for a while, until eventually it did get a grip, and was able to pull the tread, and fell off the back of the bus. So now I just designed a simple level for this to go through. It starts out with a sports car here, and once the level's over, the sports car will reach its flag, that's how it'll end, but it has to climb that, gets over a little ledge, has to climb this bridge here, which the custom shapes can interact with, so that should be perfectly fine. And then once it's done with the bridge, it ends up going to this flat area, which it'll settle on, and that's where it'll pull back the rack and be able to shoot. And that's it. So guys, thanks for watching. I held off on this video for a little while because I knew it was gonna involve custom shapes, which I wasn't very familiar with. So I'm glad I ended up figuring out how to use them and got to make this. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. And otherwise, until next time.